Hey, welcome! This is a long format video of all our previous production about the J20. I'm doing this because YouTube is not very kind with all their videos, but there are no particular updates about the aircraft, save for the fact that the Chinese are ramping up the production and an increasing number of units is swapping their old aircraft and or in some cases even J11s for the J20. The dual seater prototype keeps flying, but still we don't know any detail about this new variant. So, with no further ado, here is the J20. Enjoy! So here's the thing, we don't know much about the J20 and probably we won't know much for a while. However, there are several analysts that are following its development and now there is enough open source intelligence to have a reasonable discussion, even without Otis hacking into Chinese computers. The beginning of the development started in the 90s. The first flight happened in 2011, the first delivery started in 2017, the first combat brigade was formed in 2018, but in 2019 the J-20B started being delivered. Since then it is estimated that two more brigades have been equipped with the aircraft, which this would mean probably between 120 and 150 units. Yeah, I know, it seems a lot, but Chinese do everything very quickly, so it's probably not impossible. Anyway, we don't know the mix between the two versions. And exactly when I am preparing the video, here it appears. The first good look at the dual-seater version. The configuration is twin-engine Delta Canard with a long and slender lifting body. This is an interesting configuration from an aerodynamic point of view since it has the potential of still enjoying the advantages of the Delta Canard, but also being quite efficient because the aerodynamic surfaces are kept relatively small. The aircraft seems long, very long. With the wings placed so far back, one might actually question the fact that the aerodynamic center is actually on the back of the center of gravity, which is something necessary because the design is a relaxability design. However, if you observe the aircraft plan form and you keep the canards and the lifting body in consideration, it probably doesn't seem so far-fetched. The aircraft gives the impression of being long if seen from the side because the canopy is very small and also the vertical stabilizers are quite small. And the vertical stabilizers are quite small because they are divided in two sets of two. There are two classic stabilizers um, above the aircraft canted outwards, but also two smaller fins below the aircraft pointing outwards as well. From the overall proportions it seems a very long aircraft, but in fact it is shorter than the Suhoi 35 or the Suhoi 57. Well, not by much, but it is shorter. The canard configuration seems to be a relatively classic loose coupled canards, which should provide a good maneuverability together with the leading edge root extensions of the small delta wing. Overall, this configuration should be relatively resilient to departure. However, it seems that the aircraft is not capable of post-stall maneuvering, and even the maximum angles of attack are not that extreme as we have seen in other modern fighters. Analyzing an aircraft structure from the outside is always a game of conjectures, but we love it, so let's do it! 
Structurally, it seems that the aircraft is built with a single central torsion box with the bulkheads changing shape to accommodate the engines and the wing spars are probably blended with the rear bulkheads. The weapons bay is between this central box and the canards and since the weapons bay is an opening the structural rigidity is actually compromised by the opening uh, either for torsion or for bending since the canards impose aerodynamic loads to the structure placing the canard in that position means that either there have been some weight penalties to add material to restore the rigidity or maybe there are some limitations to the use of the canards for example a heavy asymmetric maneuver can place a heavy torsion load on the structure and basically bend or twist the aircraft Half of the weight of the aircraft is aluminum, about 30% is titanium and only 20% is composites. So despite the fact that it is a relatively modern design, it is not one of those plastic planes. The J20 seems to be covered in some sort of rather absorbing material, but the whole structure is definitely designed with stealth in mind. We have the classical ridge on the forward part of the fuselage. There is plan for alignment. There are no straight angles. So all the four tail surfaces are canted outwards. The air intakes are diverterless intakes. The surface is relatively smooth. Panels and openings are all serrated. All of these are classic style design features. And obviously the and the obvious question is, why canards on a style design? These are usually very radar reflective features because they have a straight angle with the fuselage and when they're close coupled, they promote the bouncing of electromagnetic radiation between the canards and the wing. In the case of the J20 though, the canards have a very prominent dihedral and the fuselage at the insertion point is inclined downward so it is impossible to say how stat an aircraft is just by looking at it but in this case it seems that the canard problem has been at least mitigated it is also worth noting that from the side the aircraft profile is quite low this means that the surface that is exposed to the radar energy is also relatively low if compared with the overall size of the aircraft No I'm, no, I'm really not covering this because there is too much confusion. So it seems that the aircraft is using two different types of engines and probably a third will be available from 2023 or 2025. But the names, the versions and the features of all these engines are basically all over the place. The one thing that seems certain is that the current aircraft doesn't have the final engine so it should be considered underpowered. However, it seems to be underpowered in the same way the Suhoi 57 is. Now is very good, but in the future it will become great. We do have some official numbers derived from some signs at the latest expo where the JU20 has been present, but that's hardly a reliable source. I still think we should procure the manuals, sir. Otis, don't you have anything else to do? No, sir. Okay, while you're here, please show the specification, but no more hacking, okay? While some information has emerged during the years about the sensors and the systems, we still have a sketchy picture. For example, we don't know about the sensor fusions or the electronic warfare capabilities, even though we know that the aircraft is equipped with an indigenous data link. The cockpit is a modern all-glass cockpit with a large panoramic head-up display integrated with the helmet-mounted display. 
The helmet can be used to display the images from a distributed aperture system with four sensors, two on the front of the aircraft near the cockpit and two on the back of the aircraft. These dash systems are becoming increasingly common, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's true, Otis, even though the pilot's response has been lukewarm at times. The configuration of the other optical systems is not entirely clear because the sources differ. The aircraft has a chin-mounted optical window that really looks like the uh, F-35 EOTS but it should house an infrared search and track because we have Chinese sources mentioning an Erst and there's pretty much no other place where it could be housed. Some other sources mention two separate systems, one called the NEOTS and the other one the infrared search and track. I personally think the first one is correct, but we don't know for sure. The radar is an AISA system credited with a large number of elements, up to 2,000 according to some sources, and it is believed to have really good performances. Some analysts believe that the aircraft may have side-looking and rear-facing antennas, but yet we have no confirmation of that. In the same way, there are several panels on the J-20 that could be antenna housing, but their function is actually unknown. Chaffs and flares dispensers are mounted in the fairings at the root of the vertical stabilizers and in the same fairings there seems to be even more antennas uh, that we can only suppose that are related to the electronic warfare and the radar warning systems, but again their exact function is unknown. The aircraft doesn't have a cannon and all the armament is stored in the ventral main bay and in two smaller side bays. There are four underwing hardpoints but they have never been seen carrying anything other than fuel tanks for ferry flights. The main role of the J-20 seems to be air superiority and the weapons of choice are the PL-12 medium range and the PL-15 long range missiles. Four units can be carried in the main bay. We know that the Chinese have achieved supersonic payload separation, so definitely these uh, missiles can benefit from a launch at high speed. The new PL-21, which is a long-range air breathing weapon, seems also to be compatible with the J-20. The two side bays house a one PL-10 each. It is a infrared guided short-range weapon. There is a curious detail here. The side bays uh, close immediately after exposing the weapon, leaving it hanging from the side of the aircraft just before the launch. The air-to-ground weapon seems to be limited to the smaller uh, representatives of the LS family. These are pretty much the standard guided bombs in service with the Chinese Air Force. These are gliding bombs and there are various versions, either with inertial guidance, GPS guidance or laser guidance. You may have noticed that the panoply available to the J-20 is actually relatively limited. From this relatively limited variety of weapons, it seems justified the assumption that the J-20 is designed to snipe at the high-value assets of the Western Air Forces, like the OACs, the electronic reconnaissance aircraft, the tankers, and so on. It really seems reasonable that the main mission of the J-20 is to stacking the typical force multipliers available to a modern air force. And another possible target to snipe at long distance are the air-to-ground assets of an attacking force, which won't be capable of defending themselves at long range. In both these scenarios, the capability of getting relatively close to the target thanks to stealth, but also using long-range weapons, well, just makes sense. In the same way, it makes sense to use the aircraft to attack high-paying ground targets with precision-guided weapons, which is basically also the mission where stealth actually shines. And the flip side of this approach is that the actual air combat 
is probably best left to the flankers, and China has a lot of them. Stealth. Yes, stealth again. Yes, because stealth is the obsession of so many air forces, but it is also the obsession of so many enthusiasts. But the point of view is different. Yes, because the enthusiast wants to know if an aircraft is more stealthy than another. So today we are having a look at the Chinese J-20. Let's start. Yes, Otis, it is indeed a game. Rule number one, it is not possible to numerically assess how stealthy an aircraft is just by looking at it. You need to make proper simulations to have a quantitative measure. Rule number two, however, if we look only at specular reflection stealth, we can assess if that specific geometry is there or not. So no diffraction, no radar absorbing materials, no infrared. Rule number three. Well, it may seem that we are ignoring a lot, but geometry is the main contributor to stealth. And it is the only one that you can really see clearly from the pictures. Radar absorbing materials have evolved a lot since they are first aeronautical use, but they still are not the main contributor to stealth. Rule number four, since the United States are the country that has invested the most on stealth, today we are comparing the J-20 to the F-22 and the F-35. J-20 cockpit, F-22 cockpit, as you can see, the profile is similar. So the performance of the canopy should be similar, both for aerodynamic and stealth. Canopy stealth is important because radar radiation entering the canopy will bounce around inside the canopy and then it will be reflected outside, magnificated. So in absence of a canopy capable of reflecting the energy itself, the cockpit is quite a big reflector. Second element, this edge on the side of the aircraft, which is common to pretty much every style design. We will see better from a different point of view. The Radum interface with the aircraft is not perpendicular with the axis of the aircraft. This is a stealth feature. Radar antennas, since are good emitters, are also good reflectors. If the Radum is inclined in this way, the radiation coming horizontally will be reflected away. This serration exists because the rim of the fuselage around the antenna is quite a powerful reflector. We may imagine that on the F-22 there is a different solution not based on serration but rather on radar absorbing material. From this frontal view we can see quite clearly the fuselage edge in both aircraft. This is a typical stealth feature. It has several functions but it also splits the fuselage side into two sections inclined in different ways. If radar radiation is coming horizontally, which is the case for most of the times, and in general it is the case for any far away emitter, then it is specularly reflected away from the direction where it is coming, because here we have the emitter, but in general, we also have the receiver. So the radar radiation is reflected away from the receiver. And the same is true for the J-20 that has a similar configuration as we can see here. In literature, you find bistatic radars as a way of defeating stealth. A bistatic radar is a radar where the receiver is not co-located with the emitter. This is by no means cutting-edge technology. The first radars ever created were indeed bistatic radars. 
You can also see the two aircraft are similar in the configuration of the canopy from the front. Two straight sides, portion of the canopy straight and then with a curved connection between the two. It is not a bubble like in other aircraft, for example the F-16. This is working in the same way as the side of the fuselage and the radiation that hits this curved path will be reflected away as well in a specular manner these two angles will be the same an extremely important feature as we can see on the f-22 we have a very shallow angle like this and the same is true for the j-20 even though the angle is not as shallow as the f-22 the mechanism at work here is always the same. The radiation is coming from the side and reflected away. And the same, as you can see, may be true for the J-20. If the side of the fuselage was vertical, the reflection would have been directly toward the emitter. So an important geometric stealth feature is not having vertical surfaces on the aircraft. Obvious consequence of this geometric arrangement is that if the aircraft is banking, maybe this side of the fuselage becomes vertical and then stealth is greatly reduced. So stealth aircraft tend to have their best performance in terms of reduction of radar return when they are flying straight. Also, the J-20 has canards, and as we can see, the angle that the canards are forming with the fuselage is quite shallow as well. Normally, canards are not conducive to stealth because they introduce an extra interface between an horizontal surface, the fuselage, and since they are in front of the aircraft, which is the area where you want your aircraft to be more stealth, they are normally avoided. Here on the J-20, we can see that some care has been put in minimizing problem of canard. From this picture we can also see the shape of the air intakes. J20 has DSI intakes while the F22 has conventional wedge intakes. At least I believe they are so I think there is a mobile ramp inside here. But for stealth purpose what is important is that the shape of these intakes is not rectangular but it is a lozenge. This is very important because straight angles have the property to reflect optically any energy directly toward the emitter. It's just elementary geometry. So so in you will never see a straight angle on a stealth aircraft. As we can see the J20 has a lozenge shape as well. This angle is cute, angle is acute, this angle here is shallow, this angle is acute. As we can see the air intakes are quite different because the J20 is using DSI intakes so it has a small bump here. It shows us that the aircraft have a different optimization. The F-22 is optimized for high supersonic speed, the J-20 for transonic speed, even though this doesn't mean that the aircraft could reach Mach 2. However, this bump on the DSI intake is actually helping for stealth since short wavelength radar, for example, the X-band or Q-band radars that are used by other fighters or some surface to air systems, cannot penetrate inside the intake and be reflected. Or better, this bump is actually masking a little bit the inside of the intake, contributing to stealth. Not massively, but it is an extra contribution. In this picture, we can see even more clearly the intersection between the wing and the fuselage in both. This region here is very clean in both the aircraft. The J-20 has this small bump in here. There is another one on the F-22 here, but it's small stuff. Another feature that is actually visible from here is this flat area. A flat lower fuselage is another stealth feature because uh, with the same logic that we have described before, it reflects radiation away. 
Now in this picture you can see uh, the aircraft while it is uh, rolling and so the side of the fuselage is vertical. In this case the reflection will be specular and toward the emitter. So if the aircraft is banking it is less stalled. You can also see that the two aircraft have pretty much the same configuration, the same tunnel between the engines, which I believe it is a concession to aerodynamics. This should reduce drag at subsonic speed, at least it seems so. You can also notice the difference in the nozzle configuration. The F-22 has the well-known B-dimensional nozzles. J-20 has classical nozzles. We'll, we'll get back to this later. From this point of view, we are also seeing a, another typical uh, stealth feature, which is the inclined vertical empennage, which is true for both aircraft. As you can see, the F-22 has bigger vertical empennage than the J-20, and this is due to the fact that the J-20 also has these fins down here. So the total vertical surface is, is split in two on the F-22, but is split in four on the J-20. Again, the mechanism is always the same, radiation from this side reflected away. Now notice how the F-35 is different from the J-20. Here in this region that we said it is critical, uh, we have a very clean uh, interface, a very clean side. On the F-35 is exactly the opposite. We have this structure here, which is curved, actually, that, well, I don't know exactly what it is, will contain something. And also the rest of the fuselage is sort of rounded, here which is good for aerodynamic reason probably better than the flat surfaces on the j20 but is definitely less stealthy from a geometric point of view if you have a curved structure and some radiation impinging well you will have radi reflections away obviously perpendicular to the curved surface but you are guaranteed that here there will be a point where the reflection will be straight toward the emitter which is exactly what we don't want. This is the reason why we try to limit these kind of curved surfaces. Now the consideration behind this type of rounded shapes used on the F-35 is probably that the F-35 uses rather absorbing materials to a much larger extent as the J-20 or the F-22. The radar absorbing material is actually integral with structure, so these materials probably uh, reduce the amount of energy being reflected much more than on the J20 or the F22 so basically the designer can get away with a geometry that is not stealthy however this is conjecture from this point of view we can see another feature that is typical of stealth which is platform alignment on the F-22 we can see that this line is aligned with this line, this line is aligned with this line, and even the serrations and the air intakes are pretty much aligned in the same way. What is the logic? Pretty much the same as usual. All the aerodynamic surfaces and the serration corners will reflect the energy toward a single direction and they won't spread the energy back toward the source. So there will be one direction here where the aircraft is not stealth, but it will be just one direction. If there is no receiver here, well, the aircraft is not going to be spotted. On the J-20, we can see the same. This line here on the canard is pretty much aligned with the leading edge in here. And this line on the canard is aligned with this trailing edge here. And the same is true for the serrations as usual. If we make the same comparison with the F-35, we can see the usual plan for alignment on the F-35 too. What's not worthy though are these bumps on the lower side of the wing of the J-20 and these are absent from the F-35. These bumps obviously contain the hydraulic actuators of the aerodynamic surfaces here on the 
trailing edge of the wing. In the J20, these are not hydraulic, these are electric, and it is a very interesting technology because they are small enough uh, to be entirely contained within the thickness of the wing, so there are no bumps. And these bumps, actually being rounded surfaces, do have some radar return. Another interesting difference that you can see in this picture is the difference between the nozzles of the two aircraft. On the F-35 there is serration, there's nothing like that on the J-20. Also considering that this area here where we have the intersection of the vertical surfaces with the fuselage is relatively dirty, we can probably expect the J-20 to have a lower level of stealth from the rear aspect. It should be excellent from the side, it should be excellent from the front, but here from the rear there are probably some more reflections. So if you are interested to learn more about the J-20, there are several other videos on the channel where we discuss the aircraft and they are going to appear here beside me. Thank you very much to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member and from today there is a new way to support the channel. If you are into aircraft as much as I have, I want to draw your attention to Air Models, a company that produces models like this one that I'm showing you. This is an F-35 B, a British model. I bought this because, well, it looks nice in the background. It can be a present, a nice decoration for everyone who is definitely into aeronautics. I invite you to visit the link in the description or in the pin comment. It is an affiliate link, so if you end up buying something from them, I have a small percentage and there is no extra cost to you. In the meanwhile, thank you very, 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 very much for watching and see you next time.